Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Java series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to do pattern matching with the instance of operator. Alright, so this is a feature of Java 16 that just came out recently a few months ago. And Java 16 had a few updates like records and um, uh, the J package uh, thingy for uh, packaging Java applications and also, of course, instance of pattern matching. So let me show you first before uh, we show the new feature how you can use the regular instance of operator in Java in case you just need a, a recap on that. So let's say that we have a string here. So string thing is equal to I enjoy eating cheese. So let's say you are a guy that, that likes eating cheese. So what we're going to do is create an object variable out of this, call it obj, and that's going to be equal to thing. So of course thing and every other type of object automatically extends the object class. So this thing string here is an object. So we can just literally make a new object uh, variable here and then set it to the, the result of this variable here. So, so since we have this generalized object variable here, it can be literally anything, right? Because any object within Java, like I said, is an object. It extends this. So to determine if it's a string or not, we can do if object instance of string. And if that's true, then this will run here. So we can do string, string is equal to casting the object back into a string since we know it's a string and then output string, string. So what this does here, this instance of operator, it simply checks to see if the thing on the left is an instance of the type that you provide on the right. So since this object here, variable here, is a string behind the scenes, this means that this will be true because this object variable is an instance of string since we first created it as a string. And then this is a pattern that you see very often within Java programs. Once you verify that something is an instance of another type, then what you do is you cast it into that type because you know that you can safely use it without any issues. Because um, of course you can accidentally cast into something that it's not and then you'll get an error from doing that. So yeah, so we're casting into a string and then we're printing it out as a string. So otherwise it would not, you know, do anything, right? So if you run this, it should say string colon, I like eating cheese. There we go. I enjoy eating cheese. Great. Perfect. So that's how that works. That's a very, very common pattern that you'll see. But in Java 16, you have pattern matching with instance of. So this makes it much more easier to use. So instead of doing the cast here every single time, you can simply have it make the local variable of string for you. So let me show you how you can do that. So we're going to say JDK 16 instance of pattern matching. And it's actually really simple. So if you do if object, the thing you're checking to see is, is an instance of string, then you can just put the variable name. So string. Okay, so then we'll do the same thing. So string, string. So what this does is it only creates the string local variable of the scope here if the pattern here or the uh, instance of operator evaluates to true. So this is known as the pattern variable. So string is known as the pattern variable because if the, um, the pattern match evaluates to true, then this local variable will be created and you can use it within the scope of this if statement here. So we should run this now and we should see the same results. There we go. So we get string, I enjoy eating cheese, string, I enjoy eating cheese. So that's really cool, right? So now you don't have to cast it manually manually every time you know that the type is equal to a um, another type, right? So that's really awesome, right? It makes your code much more concise and it makes sense to work like this, right? It cuts down on the code and it only creates the variable if it's you know true. So otherwise else, s out string string this is invalid because this string variable will not exist within the else scope here it'll only exist where the instance of operator evaluates to true so if you run this now boom now we get cannot find symbol variable string because of course it doesn't exist here because else only runs if this is false and if it's false then the variable is not created by the uh, pattern matching anyway so let me give you another example here so you can see this uh, in more detail so let's create a new interface here, new Java class interface shape. So this will just be a simple marker interface, so we don't need to use that anymore. So new Java class, we'll make a rectangle in, uh, class here, so rectangle. So rectangle is going to implement shape. And uh, make sure it's shape from uh, 
yeah, there we go. It's shaped from Arco, not from something else. So we'll just have a few things within here. So our rectangle is going to have a width and a height. So private double height. Great. And then we'll just initialize that with the constructor and create some getters and some getters and setters for that. Getter, there we go. Awesome. So now we have a rectangle. And let's go ahead and create one more shape. We're going to we're going to create a triangle. So that's going to implement shape. And a triangle is going to have a base and a height. So private double base, private double height. And we'll do the same thing. We'll create a constructor and some getters and setters. So code generate getter and setter. Boom. Okay. So now let's say that we want to use this within our code here. So let's say that we have a, let's get rid of this first of all. Let's say that we have a shape variable. So shape shape is equal to new rectangle and so our rectangle is going to have a width of two and a height of three and let's say that we want to take a random shape and then find the area of it so private static double because it's returning an area calculate shape area so it's going to take a random shape variable for us to work with here and of course a area can be calculated different depending on what the shape is so for if it's a triangle it's base times height divided by two and then if it's a rectangle, then it's just the width times the height. That's how you calculate those areas. So we need to check to see if the shape is a rectangle or if it's a triangle and then calculate differently depending on what the type is. So we can do that. If shape instance of rectangle, then we can do rectangle R is equal to rectangle, rectangle shape. So we're just checking to see if the shape is a rectangle and then casting that shape, if it's a rectangle, into a rectangle uh, variable so that we can get the width and the height from it because you cannot get the width and height from a shape uh, variable here, right? So we can do uh, return r.get height times r.get width. There we go. Now else if, if shape instance of triangle now we'll do triangle t is equal to triangle t, or shape rather. We're casting shape into a triangle uh, object. So return t, we'll do actually 0 0.5 times t dot get base times t dot get height. So of course the formula for calculating the area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height. Great. So now else, if, um, if it's neither a triangle or a rectangle, which is never going to happen because you can only create a triangle or rectangle, um, it'll just return negative one. Okay. But that doesn't matter. That's just, uh, so the thing works correctly. So anyway, this should work. It should determine if the shape variable here is a rectangle or a triangle. But the point is, is that this code is not very, um, concise or it's, it, we can clean it up is what I'm trying to say. So we can do that with the new JDK 16 pattern matching. But before we do that, let's just see if it works first. So we'll do S out area, uh, shape area, calculate shape area, shape. There we go. So we should get a uh, six because a rectangle two times three is six. There we go. So shape area, area is six. So how can we clean this up using the pattern matching that we just learned? So first of all, we can actually just get rid of these castings here. We don't need them at all anymore. And we can just say rectangle R and then triangle T. So this again, will just create this rectangle local variable or R local variable. Well, we can just rename it rectangle, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? It'll create this R local variable if only shape is an instance of rectangle. And then of course it'll create the T ver local variable for this scope here if shape is an instance of triangle, okay? So now if we run this, it should do the same thing. It should still return six. Great, there we go, we get six. And we can change this to triangle if we want to. So this time we should get three. There we go, we get shape area is equal to three because two times three divided by two is three, great. So you may be wondering, what is the scope of these variables that are being created here? Now there's a good motto that Java provides for this. I'm gonna just paste it here. Um, let me copy it. This is directly from their documentation. So a good motto for determining the scope of the local variable for your instance of pattern matching is a pattern variable is in scope where it has definitely matched. So what this really means is that the scope of the local variable for the pattern match will only exist where it makes sense to exist. So you just literally have to think about it. So let's say that we have if 
shape is an instance of rectangle R. This means that R will exist in this scope because, of course, R makes sense to exist in the scope. Since the shape is an instance of rectangle, this means that the if statement evaluates to true. So that means that inside of this branch here, the shape will be a rectangle. So you can value so this rectangle uh, local variable or our local variable will make sense to exist. But of course, if we have an else statement here, R will not exist in this scope because of course, so since this only evaluates to true for this branch, this other branch here will not ha ever have the R local variable because of course it, it just doesn't make sense to have it here, right? Because this is always going to be true or if it's true, then it will it'll run here. It'll never run here if this is true. But you may say, okay, that's really simple. Why did you even need to tell me that? That's really just common sense. Because if I do something like this, let me just get rid of this. If shape instance of rectangle, we'll actually do triangle, triangle T. And then we just literally um, negate that, make it opposite. This is where it gets kind of cool. If I can type, <laughs> there we go. So uh, T will not exist in the scope, but T will exist in this scope. So this shows really the, the intelligence of the Java language. So even though that this pattern match here will evaluate to true, the T pattern variable will not exist within this if statement branch here because it's negated. So it basically knows that it only needs to exist in this branch here. So if you were to try and use T within this branch, it would not work. But if you were to try to use T in this branch, it would work. So T, that's perfectly valid. IntelliJ does not complain. But here, of course, it's like, what the heck are you talking about? Because it's negated, if it's true, it's not supposed to exist here. But if it's false, then it will exist here. So that's what that means, okay? All right, so the final thing I want to show you is if you want to do some more complex uh, conditions here. So if shape instance of triangle T and t dot get height is greater than two this is valid because this will only run here if this is true first because because as you should know the and um, logical operator here will short short circuit so this means that this second condition will only run if this one is true first so if this is false then this one is not even going to be checked because java knows that for the AND operator, they both have to be true. So if the first one's false, then there's no point in checking the second condition, right? So in this case, this is this actually helps us because um, this won't make sense if the T variable doesn't exist. So because of short circuiting, it'll work just because if this one is true, then this one will run. And this one will work only if the T variable exists. So if the shape is an instance of triangle T, then the T local variable will be created, the pattern variable. And therefore, you can successfully run the uh, second condition here without any issues because the t variable will obviously exist in this case if this even reaches this part. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. But if you were to do something like a order operator, this would not work at all because no matter what, this does not short circuit, right? So this will run no matter if this is false or true here. So if this is true, then of course the local variable of t, the pattern variable, will be created and that will be fine, but in circumstances where this is false, this one will still run even though the t local variable does not get created. So this is why IntelliJ is like, what the heck, I cannot resolve the symbol t because of course it may or may not exist um, whenever the program runs. So you cannot use it with a or con um, condition is what I'm trying to say, the or conditional operator. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty simple feature, but it's really, really cool. It helps you, you know, code faster, more flow. Um, you can avoid, you know, really just things that you would have to do over and over and over again. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. That's how you can use Java 16 pattern matching with the instance of operator. I will leave the code for this episode in the description below so you can check it out. You can view all the code. It's actually right here on my GitHub. I'll leave a link for this. You can view all of the code for this episode. It has, you know, it's written up with comments and everything like that. So you can come back and read it. So you don't have to rewatch the video. So make sure you bookmark this if you uh, don't want to forget it or you just save my uh, GitHub and you can go back, come back to it at any time. One other thing is that I'll leave a link to our Discord server in the description below so you can join our server, get some friends, ask for help. It's a really cool community for programmers and uh, I really hope you join it. So a link in the description below. 
And the final thing is if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel any time. It's a cool way to support the channel. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, including this one, a cool rank on my Discord server, so you can show everyone how cool you are. And also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So thanks to all of you guys who are supporting me currently. If you can't support me, if you can't join, that's okay too. I really appreciate you watching the video anyway. So thanks a lot. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.